Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 84 of A Letter to the King. If you're new to the series or you're new to the global server, this is my attempt to keep us up to date with what's been going on PvP-wise on the global server, the server that never sleeps. I've been away for two or three weeks, and so I'm going to bore you with what I've been doing for two or three weeks, then I'm going to try and give you an update as to where we are on the server. Um, I travelled uh, to Japan and China. I went to Tokyo and then off to Osaka. Here is the UI for a Tokyo toilet. And if you push those buttons wrong, um, you can get a gender reassignment. So be wary of that in Tokyo. That button there, don't push that button while you're on full thrust. Um, the interesting thing about going to Tokyo and then later on Beijing is we were one day ahead of uh, the President Trump, um, which meant everywhere we went was lovely and clean. The clouds had been seeded and the beggars had been shot. So we had a particularly choice time to visit. Um, I have to say, uh, China was absolutely amazing. And if you ever get the chance, uh, I'd highly recommend you go to Shanghai, which is like going into Blade Runner real time. It is just an amazing spot to be. Um, anyway, that's enough of my holiday slideshow that I've been boring with you. Let's try and work out where we were and where we're going. So before I went away, or shortly after I went away, a big patch came in uh, that changed the way port battles work. So it's not based anymore on, on deep water ships, normal ships, frigates if you like, and shallow water ships. You now can put a composition of anything you want, more or less. You still need shallows and shallows. Uh, and the ships you take are bound by the BR, so some ports will let you take... 7200 BR in, some will let you take 4800, some will let you take 2000, etc, etc. Um, and this has been very interesting. I think it's probably a good idea. I'm not completely got my noggin around it. Certainly now that it's a sort of clan-based attack rather than any old muggle can get in, um, it means that you can plan your attack and your composition more easily than you could when any old Joe could rock up. Um, I've still not found a solution for how to get a nice clean shot of the screen, incidentally. I'll, I'll work out, work something out there. Um, and probably the real crunchy change was um, they have banned outlaw battles. So pirates can no longer biff on pirates. And this is because basically it was being abused too often. Too often it wasn't being used so that pirates could biff on pirates. Uh, too often it was being used as a way of avoiding combat or hiding or running away or whatever. Now, I don't know what the numbers are. I don't know what the, made the devs finally do it. I don't know if there was a particular incident. Um, but uh, one of the most fun things of being a pirate was being able to bash other pirates. And although there were definitely abuses of the outlaw system... Um, it's a bit of a blow to the old pirate community to lose it. And as such, I think there's been a bit of a migration away from the pirates. And we'll see what effect that has had. So before I went on my sojourn and did my Trump Vanguard travels on my North Korean missile tour, uh, what we saw was that the Brits and the pirates were fighting over George's town and Little Cayman and Cayman Brack. Um... The Dutch were having a kit, the Swedes were having a, quick, a kit, the, the Danes were struggling to get through the Great Firewall of China, as indeed was I. Uh, the French were pretty quiet, and really it was the Brits, the Pirates and the Americans, uh, predominantly in this area, this area around Barranquilla and uh, Cartagena, and of course in the Bahamas and up and down the uh, tip of South North America. Um, now, I don't think anything's changed here. Um, I'm not quite sure what the giggity do is with the Swedes. I've sort of got a little bit of intel that they might be semi-buddied with the pirates because they might be made up of a lot of ex-pirate players. But uh, I've not changed it yet because I need to get some intel on that. So feel free to fill me in. That would be good. Um, if we get on to what actually happened. Uh, now this is going to be a bit of a summary. Uh, I've got a really big problem at the moment with naval action. Um... Europe's gone through daylight saving. Uh, the Aussies went through it about two months ago. Now, normally, 
for us, shutdown was at 6 p.m. And then when we had daylight saving, that became 7 p.m., which was a bit annoying. Then for some reason it went to 8 p.m. And now shutdown for us Aussies is at 9 p.m. And this is just awful. So you get home from work at 6 o'clock. You pretend you love your family and feed them and say hello and, you know, put new name tags on the new kids you've acquired or whatever. Uh, and it's maybe 7 o'clock after you've spent an hour of quality, f you know, family time or whatever. Um, and the problem is that it's like 7, 7.30 and then shutdown's at 9 o'clock. So there's not much you can do in naval action in an hour, an hour and a half. Um, no time to set up a port battle because it would probably be before most of us got home from work with the two hour rollback. Um, and then of course downtime kicks in at 9 o'clock. The last week, four of the seven downtimes were for 90 minutes. So that means it's difficult to get on before 10.30 at night. And then you're trapped again because you can't then set up a port battle until sort of 1 o'clock in the morning on a school night. So that's all a bit shit. So I have to be honest, for the Australian Australian players, um, and I would probably say for even the Kiwi players, there's a time difference between Australia and New Zealand of approximately 35 years. Uh, or two hours on the game thing. Um, it's really, on global, it's a really unplayable thing. Now, the devs basically say that right now the restart on both servers are sort of bound to each other. It's just the way they've got the system set up. Um, and, of course, restart at the moment, or downtime at the moment, is a very manual affair. It requires um, some of the devs to come in and, you know, give the hamster uh, a bit of a break, uh, empty its cage and then put it back in to power our servers. Um, and until they automate downtime, or in fact get rid of it, because let's be honest, most MMOs don't need an hour, so you can go and fiddle with the market and update ownership of various assets, etc. Um, I think we might be a little bit knackered. So um, I've really not, other than doing a bit of trading and a bit of ship material building, during the week, I have really not had an opportunity for any quality NA at all. Uh, and that's a, that's a bit of a problem. Let's have a look at what happened then while I was away. Well, the Brits hit up the Caymans and in a series of battles managed to push all the pirates out. Um, George's Town and Cayman Brat pretty much came down to the Brits probably coming with good numbers um, and perhaps a better composition of ships. I know that George's town um, was basically Busan Tears versus mostly Wasses. Um, and uh, I, I know that the Brits tried that again at Nassau and the Pirates, because it's a lower BR battle, um, then managed to hold it because the, the, the Brits had probably come in in too many big ships, which meant that they were too easily outnumbered. But this composition is really good. If you can only get eight people into the port battle, you may as well take them all in first, seconds or thirds or whatever. Uh, transversely, as the defender, if you can get 20 in, you may as well take them in Wasses or Aggies or, or, or whatever. Uh, so, um, Nass uh, not Nassau, Navas was uh, held by the pirates. Uh, the Brits have gone nut jobs through Panama and into Venezuela uh, and they've just grabbed up uh, a bajillion ports all around here so Great Corn all the way up to Cartagena is now flying a British flag. Uh, the Americans have also gone nuts, they've gone on a little sojourn up the uh, other side of uh, Florida and they have also gone mad in the Bahamas and they've snaffled up a bunch of ports um, again, I've been away, so uh, literally in China you can't get to anything, it's bazookas. Um, so it's hard to know exactly how many of these were contested or how many of these were because I th I'm pretty sure some of the pirates have gone uh, to the Swedes and all the cloggies and maybe even the Danes. Uh, the French have woke up and they've been grabbing ports up in all sorts of strange places. They've got one couple on the north side of uh, Haiti, they've got one on the south side of Cuba, and they've spread out a little bit um, from New Orleans. Uh, the Cloggies have gone nuts as well, they've grabbed up like 10 ports or so since I was last here. So they've woken up and gone a stomping. Uh, but probably the big story uh, over the last two or three weeks is the reassurgence of Sweden who have doubled their holdings uh, and, and created a swathe of Swedish held ports all the way through the Antilles. 
Um, so hopefully this week I'll be a little bit more able to give us a bit of a blow by blow account. But like I say, I'm really struggling at the moment because it's only going to be the weekends now that I can do active stuff because a 9 p.m. shutdown, anything after 10.30 is too late, like I say. And that little window, unless I get home from work early, Christmas will be all right. Uh, but evening plays goosed. Um, the Tort seems to be the place to die. Um, if you check the combat log, it seems to be La Tort, where, which is the little free town just on the north spit of Haiti there, below the pirate mother motherland. Um, that certainly seems the place to get a good slap in, and of course, as is always the case, up and down the coast of Florida. Um, the Bahamas seem to be a hot spot. We can expect some action around there. The north side of Haiti seems to be a hot spot. Uh, I don't know if the Swedes and the Cloggies are going to come to blows, or if they're mateys. That's almost impossible to tell. This little set of towns that have been made open to all tells me they might be quite friendly or the French and the Swedes at least uh, this seems to be interesting so we'll see what's happening between the Swedes and the Cloggies now there's also some really big news in the Naval Action Legends space uh, and this might be my saving grace of an evening if the servers are going to be shutting down for too long um, as of this weekend which I think in uh, America is Thanksgiving weekend, I'm never sure when their holidays are. Um, by all accounts, assuming everything goes to plan, they're going to release Naval Action Legends to us all. All Naval Action owners, you won't need a key. Not that it was that hard to get anymore. Um, and even better, uh, it's not going to require you to uninstall Naval Action and then essentially reinstall the Legends beta. Um, I do have a video in my playlist if you've not played Legends. It's a bit of an intro. It's a few weeks old, so they've changed the UI and some of the leveling rules, but it's still fundamentally right. Um, and so what you will see is on your list of games down here, Naval Action Legends will appear. Um, some people might have to prompt Steam to do that. That should be there for everybody by the weekend. Um, if you've already got it there now like I have, um, double clicking on it um, will just take you to the startup screen. But right now the server's down. Uh, by all accounts, uh, the server should be up this weekend. And this is good fun. It's kind of on average. If players are online, it's a six on six type thing. You'll start off in a little basic slur and you can work your way up to the victory. Think World of Warships for naval action. Um, each battle lasts about 40 minutes, so if you've only got an hour, if the missus says we're going in a minute, I just need to get ready, you probably get two games in. Um, or if you've only got an hour before you're heading out somewhere, this is great dropping. Um, for me, it's not, I find with all of these um, World of War Tanks, World of Ship Planes type of things, uh, I can only tolerate them for about four or five games then I sort of lose faith in humanity due to the herpaderps you tend to be playing with be a bit different for us for the first few weeks because most of us kind of know each other I've actually before I went on my holes um, I was tromming around with a couple of boys from the Aussie clan I'm part of but also with like a dirty pirate bastard who's probably the most advanced player in the legends uh, the last I knew he was up to the Boussantaire um, so um like most pirates, he's, 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 oh, Mrs. J's exploding. Like most uh, pirates, he's, he, I'd imagine he's uh, either unemployed or in prison and uh, clearly has a lot of time to dedicate. Uh, and he's also a pretty good player. So uh, I think certainly while it's in um, beta for us naval actions folks, um, I suspect it'll be good fun because we'll get to play with and against folks that we, we know either by name or by legend or by infamy or because we've sailed with them before or been in bits with them before. Uh, and I reckon that'll be really good fun and I'm hoping like folks jump onto Discord or TeamSpeak or whatever and buddy up and uh, have some real fun. So Naval Action Legends, uh, big shout out that's coming out this weekend. Hopefully it's coming out this weekend. And I don't think it's going to be like long. I think it could be Christmas through to Easter sometime, sometime around then where they might like release it to the great unwashed because it's looking reasonably good. Um, there's a lot of flourishes they need to add. Things like the post-battle reports is average. Um, 
but the core of it is definitely there and it's definitely working and it's uh, it's good fun it's good fun and it's sort of instant action as it takes two minutes to queue max uh, it takes about four minutes to close but because the wind's so important I don't have a problem with that uh, some folks who are maybe used to wielder tanks or wielder warships might struggle with the fact it takes more than 30 seconds to get into shooting range uh, but because the wind is so important in in you know sailing ships um, the fact there's that three or four minutes to jockey for position is actually really important Anyway, let us remind ourselves and have a scooch mahooch at the tally of Splinter's Sails and Blood. And uh, the Brits have been going nuts. They're almost at 100. There's only 69 free ports left now. Uh, the Brits have gone bazookas. Uh, America's made good ground. The Pirates, and I think this is just a direct result of the end of outlaw battles and basic probably grumpy monkeys in pirate town uh, the cloggies have gone bonkers uh, the danes have made small gains the swedes have doubled their holdings pretty much uh, the frenchies are up uh, dave uh, he's let me down while i've been away and he's lost a port uh, and the sausages uh, the prussians have uh, gained a port probably by accident uh, so that's it for the splinters let's have a look at the clan count and here we see the swedes in with a bang straight in at number five uh, the Swedes win. Oh, that's very clever. See what they did there. Uh, the Chinese Danes. Oh, I've not swapped that around. The British GA. Uh, the remnants of the Pirates. Uh, Black is without doubt their strongest clan. And still a fearsome foe if they can get the numbers on. And it's at a time that suits. And of course those good looking, um, charming, witty and mostly rum soddled Australians. Uh, so they're the top five clans. So there's a lot happened while I've been away, which is what you'd expect. Um, Naval Action Legends is coming. Uh, some big changes have been made in the open world game, but tragically for me, very difficult to engage with um, due to the stupid shutdown rules. Uh, I understand them, but they're still annoying from a, you know, I live in a place where they shut it down right in the middle of your playtime. Uh, but I do understand from a dev perspective. Anyway, so that's it. I'm glad to be back on board and um, ready for some biffo. So give us a like, give us a subscribe. I'll see you on the ocean and I'll catch you.